Hey everyone, welcome to my video. Um, it's my first time speaking on a video. A little bit nervous. Um, I'm on vacation, so I figured I have some spare time to make a short video about a Baroque bow that I purchased from Amazon for a little bit over 120 bucks, tax included. Um, so before we jump into the topic, um, let me give you a, a brief introduction of myself. First of all, I'm not a professional violinist, okay? I'm an amateur violinist. So don't take what I said in the video for granted. I feel free to um, point out any mistakes that I made in the comment section. Um, I would appreciate that. Um, so I played it. I started playing the violin since I was four years old and continued my private lesson well into college and grad school. So I've been primarily playing classical music. I'm playing in orchestra, chamber music, um, solo performance as well. Um, and I did a little bit of pop music. Um, after I started working, I had a, a little bit, I had a band with my colleagues. Um, but anyway, like my primary focus is on classical so far. So, okay, so let's get started. So this is the Baroque bowl that I purchased from Amazon. You can see the link below in the description section. So it's made of snake wood, which is the material that most Baroque bowls are made of during the Baroque period. So as I bring it closer to the camera, you can see that the print does um, resemble the snake print, although I, th I personally think it's more similar to a leopard print. It's very beautiful. So snake wood is usually, it only, it, it usually only grows in South America and it's denser than the Brazil wood, which um, most of the modern bowls are made of. Um, so here, this is the modern bow. Um, it's not made of um, Brazil wood because I broke my original um, bow that was made of um, the, the um, Brazil wood. So this one is just a very cheap carbon fiber bow. It's a backup bow, so it's not very good. So when I put, when I compare these two together, frog is here, the tip is here. Apparently, a Baroque bow is a lot shorter, oh my, I mean not a lot, it's a little bit shorter than the modern bow. But that's only when we're comparing the stick. So if we um, take into like um, the spot that we start playing the bow into consideration, a Baroque bow is even shorter. Why? Okay, so let me first introduce like how you hold a modern bow, okay? You start holding a modern bow like at the grip. Uh, you don't fill, you don't fill in the hole with your thumb over here, but it's like pretty s close to this spot. And so you start playing it over here, okay? On a modern bow. Well, on the Baroque bow, as you can see, it doesn't even have a grip, okay? This entire section is the grip, but it doesn't have a grip. So what I see from other people playing um, is that they start playing the Baroque bow over here, which is like higher than the modern bow. So if we take this into consideration, you have even less space to play with a Baroque bow. Okay, so that was my major issue when I like first started playing the Baroque bow is that sometimes I ran out of space when I was playing legato. You now I had to change my bow in the middle. Um, so this is because a Baroque bow was designed to play lighthearted dance music that was pretty popular um, in the Baroque era. Um, so with that being said, it's not that too much different from a modern 
So um, the horse hair is less than a modern bow. So as I bring these two together, oh yeah, together. <laughs> Sorry for the blooper. Um, so yeah, I can see that the horse hair is thinner on the Baroque bow than a modern bow. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and it starts from a lower position than a modern bow. Okay. Another major difference between a Baroque bow and a modern bow is that um, the density of a modern bow is spread out evenly from frog to the tip, okay? While on a Baroque bow, it's heavier um, towards the frog and lighter at the tip, okay? So that's also designed for the dance music where like there's a rule of thumb of playing um, Baroque music is that the down bow is always for the down beat. It's, that's because of the structure, the density, the uneven density of a Baroque bow. And then a third difference is that a Baroque bow is supposed to be, to have like this arc over here. I mean, I guess my Baroque bow is like not the most authentic. Um, so this is not obvious with the arc. But if you compare uh, Baroque bow with the modern bow, you can tell that like the opening, like the width at the bottom between, I mean the space between the stick and the horse hair is a little bit larger than that of a modern bow. So if you see like the pictures on, on Wikipedia, for a Baroque bow, the space is even larger over here, you know. But anyway, it's, uh, it's like the cheapest Baroque bow that I could get from Amazon. Okay, so with all these lengthy introduction being said, I'm just going to demonstrate on my violin um, the difference between Baroque bow and modern bow. Although I, I try it, but I don't really see a big difference. Maybe because it's, I'm an amateur. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just gonna play um, box Gabbard on Rondo. It's from his, it's from his third partita, a typical dance music, French dance music. I'm playing. Switch to the modern bow. like what I said before is that I feel like I have less freedom of um, using my bowl because of I have less space oh, um, I'm on my Baroque bow so yeah so thanks for watching my video um, feel free to point out my mistake especially if you're a two set violin Please correct me and respond um, to me with your video.
to cash my RS. Okay? If too sad, you're watching this video. Alright, thank you.